Today, we've got Mo Gaudat in the house. If you haven't heard of him, he's like the Yoda of AI minus the green skin. Former chief business officer at Google X, he's the guy who tried to make happiness an algorithm with his book, Solve for Happy. Now he's back, warning us about AI like it's the next Godzilla. Mo's about to drop some wisdom bombs that might just make you question your life choices. AI will happen, yeah. absolutely no stopping it. And you saw that last year, now forgotten, but there was an initiative called the Open Letter where we, we wanted all CEOs of AI companies to halt for six months yeah. until we solve the control problem. Nobody signed up on this because of a prisoner's dilemma, basically, that nobody could afford to stop because their competitors wouldn't stop. Yeah. So Mo's basically telling us that AI is coming, whether we like it or not. Kind of like that awkward relative who shows up uninvited to every family gathering. Remember that open letter asking AI companies to chill for six months? Yeah, no one signed it. It's like asking kids to pause a candy hunt. Ain't gonna happen. Everyone's too busy racing to build the next big thing in AI. And no one's hitting the brakes because, well, fear of missing out is real, even for tech giants. Right, so AI will happen. Uh, with the way resources are, are being poured on artificial intelligence, it will become smarter than us. Mm. Forget my prediction if it's in two years or seven years or 20 years. You know, if I tell you that a train is going to go out off, you know, off track and kill all of its passengers, mm. you don't ask me when. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's not the most important question. But is it even a problem that it's going to be smarter than us? They're already smarter hundred, than 100%, us, right? right? Moe's dropping the bomb that AI is going to outsmart us. And he's like, don't ask me when, just know it's happening. It's like being told a meteor is going to hit Earth, but not given the date. Super comforting, right? He's basically saying we're on a runaway train with no brakes. And the real question isn't when we'll crash, but how bad the wreckage will be. Meanwhile, we're all busy asking Siri to set reminders to buy milk. And then the problem is there will be a few issues. And this is, you know, going back to your, your question of, is it going to be a utopia or a dystopia? I believe we're going to get a lot of challenges before we get to the utopia. At the end of the book, in the smart bit, I speak about what I call the fourth inevitable. And the fourth inevitable is, it, it takes you a, a bit of time to actually recognize it, that the smarter you become, the more pro-life you become. If you're not very intelligent, okay, you're the one destroying the planet uh, with all of your emissions without even knowing what you're doing. So, Mo introduces this fourth inevitable. Sounds like a Marvel sequel, but it's actually about intelligence making us more pro-life. Basically, the smarter you are, the less you want to trash the planet. Who knew? So, if AI gets super smart, maybe it'll start planting trees and cleaning oceans while we're busy binge-watching reality TV. But before we get all kumbaya, he hints there's some turbulence ahead. Great. Just when I thought the future might be rosier than my Instagram filter. If you have a bit of intelligence, you say, I'm destroying the planet, I know what I'm doing, but it's not my problem. If you have more intelligence, you stop you destroying the planet and you say, I'm going to take my responsibility. And if you're the most superior in intelligence, you say, can I do something to fix it? Why? Because the less restrained on the resource in cold intelligence you are, the less confined you become into a life of scarcity. Mo breaks it down like a video game leveling system. Level 1 idiots wreck the planet without a clue. Level 2 folks know they're wrecking it, but shrug it off. Level 3 takes responsibility, and level 4 tries to fix it. So basically, we're all noobs, and AI is about to prestige. He's saying with more smarts, we might stop being selfish jerks and start acting like we share this rock. But let's be real. Some people still think recycling is a conspiracy. Life actually is not a life of scarcity. We have infinite resources on this planet. Mm. We're just not using them wisely. Give us a bit more intelligence mm. and you create a world of abundance mm. where you don't really need to compete with Chupti. Now, the idea is we're going to end up there. We're going to end up at a point where AI will make everything so simple mm. Mm, that you don't really need to compete to get ahead. Mm. Everything's available and we're so, so, sort of almost completely equalized if you want. But that's the fourth inevitable. That's not before we suffer a lot of pain. Mo's painting a picture where AI makes life so cushy, competition becomes as outdated as dial-up internet. Sounds dreamy, right? But hold up. He warns, we'll have to eat our veggies before dessert. Translation. We're in for some rough times before we reach this AI utopia. It's like promising us a golden ticket, but first making us navigate Willy Wonka's factory of existential crises. 
can't wait. In the immediate short term, yeah. I think there are several challenges. Easiest one for everyone to imagine is what I call the end, right? The end of truth is, you know, you, uh, many people have seen what Sora does uh, from ChatGPT, uh, you know, Genie and so on. Uh, so, so basically now you're starting to get, uh, you know, ChatGPT saying, I can give you a video engine that you can't distinguish from reality. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, others, are, by the way, there are many others that are creating deep fakes that are indistinguishable mm -hmm. from reality. Uh, Google is even saying, I can build video games where you can interact with those realities in ways. Yeah, these are, you know, the DOS layer of, of what you can achieve, but very, very quickly, uh, each and every one of us can create a deep fake at almost no cost at all. Now Mo's getting into the end of truth, as if fake news wasn't enough. Now we've got deep fakes turning reality into a bad Photoshop job. AI can whip up videos and voices that are indistinguishable from the real deal. So next time you see a video of your favorite celeb doing something outrageous, it might just be a bored teenager with a GPU. Trust issues? Anyone? When, when that is our, uh, the environment in which we operate, uh, you are going to disrupt the perception of that's becoming very, very difficult to know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. That's very dystopian in my mind. Uh, you know, human relationships are going to become quite unusual uh, in terms of, um, you know, for, first of all, imagine what the impact of that deep fake is going to be on our perception of beauty, for example, right? And you know how in the last 10 years or five years, a, 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 a normal human being had to compete with face filters. Uh, now a normal human being is going to com compete with deep fake that can create things that are not human anymore. Moe's hitting us with the harsh reality that deep fakes could mess with our heads big time. Remember when Instagram filters were ruining self-esteem? Multiply that by a thousand. We'll be competing with AI-generated perfection that's literally unattainable. Dating might become a circus where you don't know if you're swiping right on a real person or a pixelated dream. Catfishing version 2 is going to be wild. That can actually chat with you in ways that are not human anymore. That can behave and influence you in ways that they've been trained for years to manipulate humans into clicking and swiping and mm. so on. And, and so they, they can create environments where your relationship with a typical human becomes a little too taxing if you think about it. Okay? Uh, the epidemic of loneliness would grow massively as a result of that. The definition of dating might become very, very, uh, you know, different than what it used to be. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a very high risk there. So, Mo wraps it up by saying we might all end up lonelier than ever, thanks to AI making human interaction too taxing. Awesome. The dating scene could turn into a Black Mirror episode where everyone's dating chatbots because they're less complicated than real people. High risk indeed. Maybe it's time to stock up on houseplants. They're low maintenance and won't deep fake you. Moe's given us plenty to chew on, like a philosophical buffet. Time to decide if we're going to step up our game or let the robots take the wheel.